Up to this point, all of our programs have required that we hard code the values that we're using into them, but it'd be a lot more fun if we could actually ask the user to input some data. So let's talk a little bit about how we can do this. Uh, up to this point, the only object that we have utilized uh, is the string object. So remember, objects at this point in the class are just kind of like uh, special data types that can do a lot more stuff. And how do we know what they can do? Well, at this point, I tell you or the book tells you. So let's go ahead and work with a new type of input object. Uh, well, basically, what we want to do is get user input. And we're going to talk about um, a function that is, was implemented in Java 1.5 and newer called the scanner object. So I'm going to go ahead and type a line. I'm going to ask that you guys do the same thing. And we're not going to talk too much about what's happening here. But essentially what I'm going to do is initialize uh, an input scanner so that we can utilize it and ask it to do work for us. Um, you don't really need to know about too much of what's happening on the right hand side, but this is object initialization in Java. What I'm actually doing is creating a variable called scan, and that's going to hold the object whose job in our program is going to be to actually read uh, input. What goes into the variable named scan? Well, a data type of uh, an object that is of data type scanner. So get user input. How are we going to do that? First thing we're going to do is initialize a scanner object to do the work for us. Because we don't want to have to do this work. We don't want to have to write this code. It's already written for us. One of the other things that we need to remember to do right away too is, and I'll enable line numbering here, is I need to go all the way up to the top of my code. Now, getting or reading data from the command line is not a default uh, piece of functionality in Java. You need to ask for it. Uh, and Java does this so that you know you're not having it doesn't want to present to you all the features that you absolutely need unless you you know so because it, it basically that gets to be overwhelming so some features in Java you have to ask for or you have to import so in this case I'm going to actually import the scanner functionality and basically what you do when you import the scanner functionality uh, is you're telling Java that hey I want to use this uh, command line input functionality Notice I put it on line one. It comes before everything else in my code. Notice I use the import keyword. And notice I follow that up with java.util.scanner semicolon. Again, where does all this functionality come from? Uh, later on, we'll look at the API, which is the application programming interface for Java. Uh, but right now, you know, the functionality that I'm presenting to you is the functionality you should use. And it's really the only functionality we want to focus on at this point. A couple weeks, we'll start to uh, grow exponentially in terms of uh, the functions of Java that we'll look at. So to get this working, I need to put this line on my code first, import, and then on my other line, uh, inside of my main method, I need to go ahead and I need to initialize my scanner object. So this is going to handle getting our object data. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to make a variable that's going to hold a string and I'm going to call it user input. So what I'm doing here is at the top of my code, I'm going to initialize all my variables. So I'm going to initialize my input. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask the user to enter some information. What I actually need to do first is just print a statement that says, you know, please enter your name. And I won't put a semicolon on that one. We'll just put a period. And then what I need to do is ask the user. So this is like a prompt. We don't want to just have a blinking cursor. We want the user to say, oh, hey, they want me to enter uh, my name. So let's go ahead and get that information from the user. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assign whatever input the user enters into my user input variable. That's why I created it. So it's a storage location that I'm going to use later on in my code to hold information. And the next thing I'm going to do is ask the scanner object. Um, notice we've done this before. We said system.out.println. So I'm going to say scan.out. And scan is the name of the variable that holds my connection basically to the command line so I can get input. And again, this is an object that we're going to ask to do some work for us. So I'm just going to say scan.next. And you'll notice that scan.next is a feature uh, that lets us actually get information or string data uh, from the command line. And this is how Java handles this other program languages you know do this a little bit differently and you can find this stuff in the book as well so this is kind of just a recap of how those uh, components work once I get the input from the user 
This reads the data in. Then what we can do is we can custom, print a customized welcome message to the user. And how are we going to do that? We'll say welcome. I don't know why I put a space in there. We'll use concatenation. I'm going to glue the string welcome to the value currently stored in user input. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this and run it. Notice when I run the program, what we get down here is it prints please enter your name. So the first things that happen is it sets up my scanner object, it initializes my user input variable, and then it comes down to line 14 and it prints my name. Or it says please, it prints please enter your name. And I'm going to put Jason in there. Input in Java, you enter into the run IO window of JGRASP, type in what you would like to enter, and hit return. Once I hit return, the value that I entered in this line of code is stored into this variable, and then I concatenate it together with welcome. So let's walk through the process one more time. When I hit run, the program initializes my scanner object. It also initializes a storage location to hold the data. On line 14, I prompt the user for the type of data that I want because it's kind of annoying to get uh, a blinking cursor and no idea what I want to get. When line 17 is reached in my program, it actually stops the program from running. The line user input equals scan.next um, stops the program from running. It's actually the, the call to the next method. So scan.next stops the program from running, reads the data, stores the data that I type into into user input. Once I hit the return key, the program continues execution, comes down and prints the customized welcome message. We can use this to get other types of data. So in our case, next uh, is utilized for getting strings. If we wanted to actually get uh, other types of data from the user, notice that the storage location here I used as a string, and it corresponds with user input, uh, getting a string from the scan object. So next reads in a string. If you want to read in any other type of number uh, to get an int, use and to get a double you probably already guessed it and I'll just leave those in the code for you to play around with problem is user input is of data type string, so the reality is if you wanted to utilize those other components, you would need to change the user type, uh, the data type of user input to in or to double. So this is the really basic uh, framework for reading data in from the user. Uh, we'll work with this throughout the semester, and if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask.